Morning, Lee. Oh. Hi, morning. Yeah, today uh, Alois will not be here and a lot of folks has asked for a leave for their <laughs> vacation. So let's just go a very quick meeting. And uh, we do have two agenda uh, in the meeting notes. So the first update is from my side and I will give you a quick update on the GitOps working group. I also see Dan is here, so maybe Dan can add more uh, details background. So there are basically two uh, important progress here. And first is of course, um, the first meeting of the working group has been um, successfully held. So uh, it's very successful community meeting and we see a lot of participators there and uh, they are all very exciting to uh, make sure that the whole working group is a open and uh, neutral, uh, vendor neutral organization. So we are actually working with that. As part of the work, uh, me and Alois has almost finished the working group a charter draft and the link is over there. So if you have any other inputs on that documentation, please just go ahead to comment because we will finalize the, work, the working group charter. Uh, I think in this week or at at least latest next week. And then when we have the working group charter, we'll send it to CNCF. So the CNCF will give us a um, official meeting link and the calendar in in invitation. So that means uh, the working group is established. And this is the first progress. A second one is uh, we have also talked with the current maintainers of the working group repo. And they are actually working on migrating the whole project to a independent organization. And uh, I think the, the last step is from the VWorks folks. Um, they are, they are, they need some legal improvement to move that thing from the Flux uh, organization. And basically they need uh, approval from the Flux maintainer. I, I don't think there's any blockers there. So it just uh, will happen. And uh, this, these are two updates from my side and uh, Dan, do you have any upgrade on the uh, GitOps working group? No, nope, you uh, you covered it all perfectly. Sure, thank you. Uh, do anyone have other inputs or uh, questions regarding to the working group before we move to next discussion? I think uh, once the working group moves, then you guys will, I mean, the community will talk, decide the governance and how to pick maintainers and all of that, yes. right? Okay. Yes, uh, it's all it's already uh, documented in the working group charter. So yes. there will be a election uh, running after the working group is established. And uh, so this is exactly the next step. And also the, the existing content in the working group report may need some revised because and today it's fully inherited from the um, Flux governance model and documentation. So it's basically writing around the Flux. So we need to Revise a little bit, a little bit to make it a fully independent project. Um, this is uh, also one of the next steps. Okay, so this is the first issue. The second issue is regarding to the operator working group. Um, I didn't see Tom is here, so I will have to speak uh, for him. So uh, the, the the progress is that the. The charter of the operator working group is also uh, finished. And uh, I have already reviewed this uh, documentation. It's basically about uh, operator definitions and the use cases of operator. So I, I believe we will send out the draft documentation to the mailing list of the, of the SIG app delivery and uh, everybody can add their final input. And just as a GitOps working group, we will try to finalize this charter and uh, publish it as the official CNCF working group charter in GitHub. So this is the next step. And there's also another thing happening in CGAP delivery last week. Uh, that is a Flux project is, uh, is asking for uh, incubation review. So the SIG will also involved in that process, but the decision maker is TOC. So we will try to provide the um, every information we know and uh, which we think is useful to uh, and the TOC. So if anyone in the SIG want to want to contribute or talk with me, uh, please feel free to um, talk with me and Alois. If you know any user story of Flux or you know anything uh, you want to let TOC know or you think there's anything it's used for, 
uh, to help or anything you need to mention in the process of the reviewed flux, please feel free to uh, ask me on the Slack, tell, talk to me on the Slack. So um, basically this is the standard review process, which happened a lot in the past few years. So I think uh, it, it will be very easy to handle for us this time. And another issue is that uh, I, don't, I didn't see that Flux folks here, but the issue is Flux is, is right now is under merging with um, Flagger. So we are very not sure if we want to involve Flagger in this review process. And uh, so right now, my proposal is that if the merge happen, I mean, happen, for example, recently, then we need to involve Flagger, but this is not this is not studied yet. So I, I didn't know that. Uh, for example, for Argo family, uh, you basically also have deep, several uh, sub project. So how do you f handle that? Do you see the every project as a same family, or they do have independent functionalities? So uh, so we see workflows and events as one family, and uh, CD and rollouts as another but they are all really used in uh, application delivery. Uh, so when we went for incubation, the story was application delivery. Joe actually called it an application delivery platform with all the components because uh, uh, the way we positioned is uh, all the projects together manage jobs and applications. So. I see, I see. So I think I think the Flux will maybe go into the similar pattern. Uh, Flagger will also be part of the um, Argo family as one of the building block, but it can be used maybe independently. independently. But in, yeah. yeah, but in most cases, the people will use them um, use the project with Flux uh, to do the GitHub. I think that will be the direction. Okay, thank you for your valuable input. Yeah. The sure, only uh, thing is when mm -hmm. we went to the TOC, the mm -hmm. Any new project we want to add to Argo family, we have to go and get CNCF approval. That's how it okay. is. Okay. That means if you if you want to add a new project into the existing Argo organization, that you need to actually run under the review of the CNCF yes. again. Yes. Okay, I see. Yeah, that is valuable information. I didn't know that before. <laughs> okay, this is basically uh, what uh, the, the, the SIG has up. Uh, the SIG has already um, is already working on and uh, oh, uh, Amy just mentioned the next sandbox project review with Jen, such as that. Sure, yeah, thank you. But uh, the Flux is actually uh, trying to promote to the incubation level, so I, I didn't know that they are related. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, I mean, Amy said next sandbox project review is January 26th. It's a comment about being able to, if you were going to add in new projects in here, that would be a way to be able to do it. Um, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I, it I, may I, be more I, complicated than being able to try to be able to like, you know, merging things. It, 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 We can take it offline, it's fine. I see, I see your point. Okay, this is basically what we have uh, from the SIG side. Um, is any topics you folks want to discuss or have questions or have uh, some issues? Uh, after the uh, repo of the GitOps working group uh, moves, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, will the meeting be a part of this meeting or the, the Thursday meeting? Are you guys yet to decide? So this is not decided yet because uh, the standard process is the the working group will have a separate meeting. That is okay. actually the the meaning for working group because okay. they want to have their independent meeting. But we do have discussion that maybe we want to merge them into the SIG meeting because uh, this is basically one of the important one of the most important field. So this is still under discussion. I think we can discuss that after we have the working group because we need some decision makers like chairs for the working group to say, okay, if they want to merge them together or not, because, because today there's no official decision makers in the working group in, instead of uh, several community, me, community members or community maintainers there. So maybe we want to discuss that uh, after we have the formal working group. This okay. is my content, I, the content idea I have. I don't know if Dan has any other thoughts on that. 
Yeah, I, I think we could uh, we could potentially merge some of it, or we could use the uh, the working group to kind of come up with proposals and and come back, you know, as a, sort of a subcommittee, if you will, and and kind of present those things. I could see it going either way. I think it just depends on level of interest and level of importance, you know, and and what else, what other things are going on. You know, don't want to be disruptive to. Um, you know other other paths that are happening within within this group so i could see it going either way cool got it another oh another issue is we we do have some uh, some devices from toc that the name of the project is kind of needs some <laughs> rethinking because um there is a plan then to donate this project to cnsf standbox but it will be very interesting to see their project in the sandbox, which has a name of the working group. So I think this part is also under discussion. I don't know if Dan, you have any idea on that or any people have any idea on that. So some of the proposal, like maybe we should change the name of the repo to uh, GitOps workspace. So it looks like more like a project instead of the working group. And uh, I, I, I see that is also a valuable option, but I didn't raise this discussion with everybody here because it's just uh, some ideas but I, I like to see your I, your your thoughts on that so whether you want to have a where do you think it need a new name or you think that the working group has a project name is fine so firstly i don't know the background of submitting the working group as a project dan might add like uh, what did, what do you, what do they mean by submitting working group as a incubation project or, or sorry sandbox project like what will be the deliverables of that project is that in the charter like, let me just look at the charter. Cornelia you were the one that sort of just start started the discussion discussion with uh, sig app delivery and started that kind of kicked off that process what do you think yeah, so I honestly um, have not thought that through in detail. So I don't know um, whether this should be a it, it, it its own independent. I think it was it was proposed as an idea, and that's something that we as a as a as the SIG app delivery and maybe as this, the working group itself should make that decision on whether this is something that we do want to actually create a sandbox project around. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is there. Hmm. There, it, was, it was just an idea for us yeah. to, to, to decide as a group. There are some other working groups in the CNCF. Are none of them under a project like that? So I can speak to some of that and I'll just kind of like wander on in and like, hi. Um, so the working groups that are actually exist predate the SIGs and um, serverless is the only one that's still active around that. There was a conversation a little bit ago about them becoming a SIG, um, but kind of died for lack of interest and there wasn't a lot of like, reason to be able to move through that. Um, I'm not sure but I've put in a link in chat about like the here is the thing that Alexis put in say line number two. This is everything that he's saying about like why this particular group should be a sandbox project. Hmm. So now you all have documentation. I wonder if uh, you know because I'm thinking about app delivery and app delivery is, in my mind, you correct me, is really looking at kind of all the different ways of handling app delivery and and enabling that. And the GitOps working group is more taking a stake in the ground of saying, we think this is the way that software should be deployed. And this is how the, the patterns that should be followed. And I imagine that there are other com potentially competing standards that may arise um, that would fit within SIG uh, app delivery and, and other problems that are being solved. So I don't... I, I think uh, Lay's question was not whether it should be a working group. It is a working group. The question is whether it should be a project. Yeah. So we have to see whether there are any other projects in CNCF which are like this. I'm not aware. So. Yeah, this is pretty new thing to you know have a project which name is a working group. So this is the question I'm asking for. So. I also talked with Alexis before uh, for this thing. I, I think his answer makes sense because it's basically we want to have very useful content in the repo of the working group. So not not just uh, like documentation or white paper. We, we want to have code 
tools and framework which are right. maintained by right. the um, community in the repo. So that will make this re repo have the potential to become a sandbox project. So I also agree with that. So I think the only thing I'm not very sure or I don't know how to handle is whether we should split them out as a project which has a name for a project, for example, potato head, right? We can give it a name and then donate to Sandbox, which is one of the delivery of the working group. Or we just want to donate the whole working group repo at the Sandbox project. In that sense, I will feel it's still it's kind of a little bit it kind of need to be weird to have a name of that is a working group, but it's actually a sandbox project. So th this is a, is a question I, I trying to ah, okay. figure out. I, I can imagine a scenario where you have almost a new category of project that are like best practice kind of, you know, cause that, that's what we ultimately are trying to do is and accomplish is like people are doing GitOps today and people are doing a lot of things. And what we're trying to do is kind of come up with this framework of like, this is, these are the best practices. This is what we're trying to do. And we're trying to evangelize around those things. We're trying to get those best practices out. Um, and it is I mean, different. That, it's different than anything else that's been done. You know? That was kind of along the lines I was thinking, I was about to ask, can the, can the deliverable of a sandbox project that it ultimately, you know, creates and maintains be something like a sense of the community of, you know, some aspect of, in this case, app delivery, where, yeah, that's going to be an ongoing statement and it's going to have to be maintained and, and updated and there's going to be ancillary code around it. But it's at the same time, it's not necessarily like a binding. It's not going to be on the same level as like official project policy. It's just kind of a, a statement of a working group of this is our opinion. But can that be a deliverable of a project? Maybe that needs to be that new kind of project that you're talking about. Yeah, so I have two questions. Um... One is, um, I guess, what do we get by making this working group a project instead of just a working group? And then second, if like this working group project eventually delivers code and tools and stuff like that, I mean, how does that relate to other like non-working group projects in this space? Um, like, it seems like it would get like some kind of implicit endor endorsement because it's like a multi uh you know large community working group type of thing and so it's not sure exactly what would happen i think we should think about it because cornelia then uh like flux is a gitops project argo is a gitops project which part should then go in this working group project we need to discuss right now if i look at the working group charter the deliverables are more best practices, documents, and uh, they are more documents. Uh, I don't see any. Right. But it could uh, very easily also go to tools, right? Like you might have tools to help people yeah. assess their needs or stuff like that. And then, so once you start going down the row of the road of tools, then there's the question of what, what is the scope of that? And yeah. does that, uh, you know, and so. Yeah, and area. I mean, I think that there's a set of things that that pre preclude that that come before tools, and that is a whole. I, I'm very very interested in examples. Yeah. Um, and I want you know sample, and that's part of the reason why we didn't want to just make this a repo somewhere. We wanted to have a GitOps working group organization in GitHub. It was that we anticipate having multiple repos that this, you know, there might be a repo here, which is some example that shows you exactly how to do things a particular way in Argo CD. It shows a particular, you know, uh, best yeah. practice on Argo CD. And another one that shows the best practice around, flux. you know, yeah. flux and, and those types of things. So we, we want this to be largely, you know, enabling, enabling users to make the most of GitOps. And right. so, you're right. I mean, at, at some point, and it, to me, it feels like a slippery slope. As soon as we start saying, well, what are the tools, you know, enabling people to be successful with GitOps defines another set of tools. Right. Also, a project, of course, in CNCF goes through certain graduation processes. That's right. right. Start with like sandbox, it becomes incubating, and whatever. What, how do, would you, how would you measure the adoption of a working group project? Is it based on the documentation, like, 
I'm not sure how you would, like, it's easy to measure the adoption or use of a tool, but how do you measure the adoption of a process yeah. and determine? So I don't know if a working group style of thing, we should put that in the same landscape as uh, like a project specifically tailored to deliver a, like an opinionated way of doing GitOps type of thing. So I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. I think Lei was trying to explain how, uh, I guess Alexis explained the project thing, uh, but it's still not clear to me like what we get out of making this a project versus it's a working group that produces recommendation, those practices documents. So if someone has a good perspective on that, uh, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, I mean, one of the questions that I have to, is to the folks who are a little bit more familiar with this whole project, you know, progression that you just described, Ed. Um, is there a notion of like everything that becomes a sandbox is the ultimate goal to get to graduation or is being a sandbox project valuable in some way? in and of itself, because it gets back to your point, Ed, of what does it mean for this to go through the graduation process? That's clear right. when you've got a project, you know, a project that has code exactly. and adoption and things and like that. But is there value, the question, but, but even if we say, well, no, this will never become graduated, is there value to it being designated as the sandbox project? Yeah, or a, um, I would say that the intent of most projects, as far as I know, and becoming a sandbox project is to eventually go to graduation. Um, projects may stop, of course, short of that. Uh, also, you know, I guess my question is not so much whether there should be some type of maturity framework for something like a working group, you know, and as Amy was saying, uh, you know, the six were started after the working groups, most of the existing working group. A lot of the existing working groups seem to be in limbo today, um, which you know is another set of problems that the CNCF probably needs to address. Uh, so it may be useful to have a you know some type of graduated maturity tier for working groups or slash pro uh, yeah working groups, but I don't know that it should be on the same landscape or playing field as like projects delivering opinionated tools and so on. So maybe yeah. it's a separate set of. Yeah, I don't know if it's the working group that graduates or if it's a practice that graduates. Like, I'm thinking, like, at some point we're going to come out. You, but how do you graduate a practice? The, the current criteria is all centered around a, like, a project, like, code, project, tool, someone uses. No, that that's true. That's true. And uh, But oh, I'm, so I'm, I'm imagining, the, like, yeah. what if we, you know, we came out with something like 15-factor app, you know? And uh, when that was when that was written, there wasn't quite a CNCF thing, but but doing it as a um, you know the community is invested in these patterns and is invested in these and and says yeah this is the way that this is the way right this is the way it should be done and and enough people have tested it and kicked the tires and worked through it and they've found that uh, if you follow these patterns that there's security improvements there's productivity improvements all these kinds of things like yeah i, I mean I agree it's a little weird like it's not something that's really been done before <laughs> i can't think of anything else in the cncf yeah. that has well, put something well, out quite like that before yeah well the other thing is of course the cncf has up to now been very careful and you know their job is not to pick winners or losers right to endorse one opinionated way of doing things versus another on the other hand there are benefits to you know standardizing and publishing practices as long as it doesn't exclude you know other alternatives right so uh, I think also it's important to maintain that balance like if an mm. entire working group that promotes a specific way of doing good ops becomes graduated what does that mean for all the other alternatives that's a good point and and I can also see, you know, on the horizon, there are these there are people who are probably thinking about, you know, if you if you can put a stamp of approval and you've gone through the process with the community of making this practice mature and making sure you've thought through the, you know, the the, the variables and stuff. I can I can imagine some bank out there being like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Like, this is something we should adopt because I can see that it's got 
this community approval and buy-in and there's there's backing yeah. behind it and there's so, there's resources yeah. there's people we can talk to that are going to help us figure out the rough edges if we're missing something you know so i definitely see the value but it is i agree with everybody like it's a little weird like it's not exactly what's been done before yeah, yeah. i think so, it would be either to understand if there can be some code i mean some kind of library uh, framework or even some command line tool uh, that will be also helpful uh, to see, okay, this is a project. So it can go through the whole process of the sandbox, even graduation someday. Uh, yeah. That will be also helpful. Uh, I, I think this is a direction we also want to push uh, everybody working on that. So what, what kind of idea we can have in this repo, uh, I, I strongly believe that we need to do something uh, which are valuable to the community uh, including the best practices that sometimes maybe codes make the whole working group uh, become a concrete entity instead of just uh, a you know some some place that we talk right <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah, yeah no we, we, have, we ultimately have to publish things right and yep. um, uh, like I, I and I think the examples that Cornelia brought up are one of the areas of importance where it's like okay well here's a pattern. And here, here are the code examples of how to implement that pattern with Argo and with uh, Flux. And I worry that the, in the past, there was a push to try to create code between the different technologies, and it, it didn't really, it didn't really work. I think there was uh, there was enough disagreement between the two projects that it made more sense to keep them separate. So. I almost think in some sense we're trying to prevent some of the pain that's happened around like um, service meshes <laughs> a little bit like like trying to say like no this is like this is like kind of the framework in which you know we can work and we can compete and we can play and we can agree about the best practice and stuff and you know, some some other project might come along that's competing that's better. It just might be a different thing. You know, it, it would fit still under yeah. SIG app delivery, but it would it would not be a GitOps thing. It would be its own thing that was, you know, you don't you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So exactly that. Like, you know, I'd like to make sure that, say, you're a GitOps project and you're not participating in the working group, and that you know such projects are not. <clears throat> Stifled. fundamentally disadvantaged or something simply because they're not you know participating in it because the tools that we're developing for this thing only there's very focused on the stuff like flux and argo or other projects that are actually participating and so it creates this barrier which prevents innovation in the future and just to, uh, i'm dave this is my first time joining this meeting but just to get onto that like i'm also in some sigs in the continuous delivery foundation which is Tecton, Spinnaker, right. Screwdriver, exactly. right? And like part of the reason I'm here, uh, just mostly listening, is because like we're about to start working on a set of uh, uh, sort of like what it's the sort of like uh, package data exchange, you know, standard of what like a, a yes. deliverable package looks like. And I was like, this is probably a good group to be listening to to see what else is going on. But there's that cross communication that, you know, for the reasons of those projects being in CNCF before CDF got created and any other pieces right. that go into those decisions, like, but we're all kind of still kind of playing in the same space. Right. And I'm, and I'm an, exactly. user, I'm really interested in what everyone has to say. Right. Um, exactly. So, I mean, David brings up a really excellent point. Like uh, there are obviously other industry groups like the CDF that's also interested in the space. So I feel like if the GitOps working group, if we do our job, right will benefit everyone, right? Whether or not you are a member of the CNCF or the working group, right? If you're working in the GitOps space, it should benefit you. If it only benefits members of the working group, then we're doing a terrible job, right? Of course, yeah. And, <laughs> and maybe we should also be reaching out and working with the CDF and other such groups to make sure, you know, I mean, if we're if the CDF and we are both working on it and trying to raise the boats for everyone, we can obviously get a bigger outcome than if we're each independently working on our own. And then at some point we're going to try to get our mess, turn up the volume on our message versus someone else's message. Yeah. And, and I've been engaging with the CDF from the beginning, um, more Great. specifically with like Tracy Reagan and 
some of those folks just talking about like what we're doing and and there was a question early on about if uh if it would make more sense in the cdf than in the cncf and i think that the members kind of felt like there was a little bit more um <clears throat> support for better or for worse in the cncf at the moment but it's not like there's not an overlap i mean they're very clear right. an overlap between <laughs> an the CNCF and the CDF, yeah. right? And and between the and between GitOps, right? It, it covered like SIG app delivery versus CD Foundation. I mean, they're, they're, we're talking about two groups that are trying to solve a lot of the same problems, right? So, um, yeah, the thing I'm specifically on is SIG interoperability, which is just trying to figure out, like, you know, we worked out the first thing that we created was like a Rosetta Stone for well, a workflow here is a pipeline there, and right. you know, all those sorts of just things that that I think supersede whether it's GitOps or more traditional like a CD pipeline or you know that sort of thing like just trying to come up with with the language that we can all speak sort of like the dictionary that you know for this group right and you know maybe like you know Dan and David you you're you know familiar with both communities uh, you know so you're like a bridge in a sense you know between some of this stuff that's happening more of us should probably be bridges in that respect uh, but um, yeah so, so yeah, so how do we, I guess one question is like, how do we structure this so that it benefits everyone, whether or not you are an active participant, because not everyone also has resources to actively participate in all of these activities, right? It's very time consuming. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think we should also give some thought to that. Like what does the working group need to do in order to really raise the boat for everyone and, you know, and what does that, you know, what exactly does that mean? What is most in need, I guess? How, how there are lots of CNCF working groups. Uh, my impression is that a lot of them are somewhat inactive. And so I don't know, is that the impression other people have? Like are other CNCF working groups highly successful? Like Amy was saying that serverless is active today. Yes, I know serverless is active, definitely. But what about some of the other transitioned ones? into SIGs? Um, storage transitioned into a SIG. Um, Mm -hmm. Security transitioned into a SIG. It's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it's hmm, it's it's interesting because like GitOps is very clearly something that would fit underneath SIG app, like within SIG app delivery. Like we're we're playing in the same playground, but um, you know, SIG app delivery is trying to solve kind of different scopes of problems, like around like. It is broader. You know? It's broader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things that I have to say is that I am not hugely concerned at this stage of us ending up doing something that only benefits the participants of this working group because of the things that we have defined that we want to produce. We want to produce white papers. We want to produce demonstrations. We want to produce presentations. We want to produce all of those things. We're, we're about produ producing educational materials. Um, and so I'm not worried that we aren't going to achieve that because that's uh, part of our charter. Mm -hmm. We're yeah, going to well, achieve I mean, value for the community. Yeah, we should achieve that. But I am concerned if we are doing things that only benefit the members of the working group. Um, that will definitely create factions because the people that is not benefiting will create their own working group. Yeah, but why is it, I, what I don't understand is why that's a concern of yours. Because if we produce these materials, and 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 you know people are people who are not participating are benefactors of those materials. Why why are you concerned that we won't achieve that? Uh, no, I mean, your statement was you're not concerned that if the working group's work only benefits the working group members, but that is not the charter of the CNCF, right? It's, it's not. To, right. Yeah. But that's what I, that's what I, I thought you're saying is that you're, you're concerned that the working group will only benefit participants of the working group. That's what I thought you were saying. Yes, because. At some point, uh, like if you're a vendor, you're in a competitive landscape, right? And so if one vendor is a member of the working group and it only benefits them, then it's a dis, you know, disadvantages other vendors who are not part of the working group. So, so I'm saying that our focus should be to lift the boats for everyone, right? Whether you are mm -hmm. an active course. participant in the working group yeah. or not. But I think and the focus should be on standards and processes and not that 
hey, this company is part of this working group, so they are endorsed by CNCA. Okay. Right. And that company. I see your yeah. point. Yeah. Because, because your if, point. if a working group only benefits its members, uh, other people who are not members of that working group will create another working group. It will create factions within the community. Yeah, but I think the answer to that is just to make sure that it's clear that anyone can join and be part of the process and and get their information in. And I, and I guess you said earlier, like not everyone can commit yeah, not that everyone time. has time. Yeah, so I, that would I think discourage innovation in this space. We we had like sixty plus people join the the last working group meeting. Um, I think it's a totally valid concern, and it's one we should definitely keep an eye on. Um, and if it looks like, you know, if something breaks in out into factions at some point, then maybe we'll have to eat crow. But yeah. for the moment, you know, like the people that were all on the call and the, the GitOps principles that we discussed and the, the outputs that we discussed, there was pretty broad consensus, um, not just from the maintainers, but very much from the whole community that was participating. And it's quite a few people. I mean... So I, I felt I felt good about it. I mean, I, feel, I think we're on the right track right now, but we should definitely be mindful that there are some potential pitfalls to fall into. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I actually think that one of the responsibilities of the working group is to um, help the community understand the growing GitOps landscape. And so part of the totally. working group responsibilities are to say, hey, look at this cool new project over here. And this is something that we haven't thought about. It's it's it's. It, it's addressing, it's providing a set of solutions that we haven't included under the GitOps umbrella. Let's, and it shouldn't, to your point, Ed, it shouldn't be that that project needs to come and say, hey, please consider us. That's part of our responsibility of the working group is to stay apprised of the whole GitOps landscape and include things, whether those people are coming actively or not. Right, well, absolutely, it, Cornelia. I think you put it very well. I totally yeah. agree. If I can jump in there too, I, I think one of the one of the things about that is maintaining easy on ramps for people to reach in. Like right. you know, this is my first meeting here, and the reason I'm here is because I gave a talk at KubeCon and Thomas Schutz reached out to me and said, "Hey, we're working on this white paper in the operator, uh, you know, working group or whatever that we think you might be, you know, have some contributions on." So he sent me a Google Docs link. That was it. That was all it took for me to be able to contribute to this. So as long as you have those easy on ramps, I think people will come, and you know, then it makes your own outreach that much easier too. Right. So yeah, so I guess one area of slippery slope is like uh, if we uh, once we start creating tools or things like that. Um, of course, some of these tools may be competitive with tools or other projects that uh, vendors or other projects have. Uh, whereas things like practices, you know, and so on and so forth, even if they're opinionated, I mean, we have collections of, we can have collections of these things and some of them may be contradictory to each other. Like not all of them can be the best, best practice. Uh, that kind of asset, you know, anyone can like leverage and use. Um, so there's a, a little bit of like, I guess we have to think carefully about what kinds of activities might exclude participation uh, versus other things, you know, everyone can benefit from. And, I'm, you know, like if no one is interested in doing some diagnostic tool or something and it helps the industry, then, you know, there's probably a you know, fair game to consider. Um, but, you know. So. Yeah, I, I view it as like, if we push these GitOps standards and practices and we're collecting the case studies and we're collecting the patterns and we're agreeing upon them. I see, I see this situation where all these companies and engineering teams who are looking for like how they should be deploying software, looking at that and they're saying, oh, look, I can go and do this with Argo. I can go and do this with Flux but ultimately like I'm accomplishing these kinds of patterns and these are like the pitfalls to watch out for. And these are the, these are the benefits. And I, I have a clear guideline of where to go and tools do help with that. You know, I mean, I've gone through the process of setting up Argo and, and flux and they have different degrees of opinion on them. Um, but so many people get lost on 
implementation detail that they can't get full advantage out of all the tools. And that's like, you know, if, if I understand the principles, if I understand the patterns, I'm going to adopt it quicker. We're going to be happier as a team. You know, I, I think it's a huge benefit to the community if we can make it right. You know, if we, if we set up a bunch of garbage recommendations, then it's not going to help anybody. But you know, if we, I think we have enough smart people in the room that that's not going to happen. Right. And maybe we're thinking too far ahead. Like uh, the first set of, you know, things we want to deliver are these practices and so on, right? And yeah. everyone agrees yeah. it's a good thing. So once we do that, we'll probably have a better idea of where this thing yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a very valuable discussion and gave me a lot of input. So uh, I think yeah. from my side, I mean, from CNCF side, there are two things very important to make this thing successful. So first, we need to establish an open, um, vendor neutral organization, which is a GitHub's working group under CNCFC guide. I think this is the right direction we're going. We are on, we're on the right track. The second thing is just as John mentioned that we need to make sure that the contribution bar of this working group is pretty low. You don't have to be the member of this working group. You don't have to be the maintainer of this working group to contribute your ideas or be part of that. So I think this is also really important. That's why I think um, the uh, the governance, the governance and the chair's election, yeah, which is the next step, it's also important that we need to make sure that the whole working group has a right, it has a right vision and has a right, has a right mindset to set the bar for everybody to be involved into this working group. I think these two things are very important based on the uh, today's discussion. And um, as the things if seek at literature, I think me and Alois were trying to make sure that we go to the right direction, a open and uh, uh, very uh, friendly working group to engage everybody from the community who are interested in this topic. So we are not building something that can, that that is focused on certain project. I will, I will say we, will, we want to create a community working group that focuses on GitOps itself. So that is uh, what I can get from the discussion today. And let's, put, let's push the whole thing to the, uh, this direction. Oh, you got muted. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I mean to make this meeting uh, short because a lot of folks say they want to go to vacation uh, <laughs> tomorrow. So. Vacation, <laughs> so another week of work left. Yeah, so, or so I, I, I didn't expect that we still have a long meeting because, you know, uh, we have basically have a very interesting topic to uh, discuss. But yes, uh, I think this is a good, good start and uh, let's work on that. Okay. Uh, any other topics you want to bring up today or you can end this meeting? Happy holidays, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Have a good break. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take thank care, you. everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>